Okay, welcome to our meeting today. It's October 12th. You know, the Austin Adobe Users Group meets the second Thursday every month, almost every month. Um, we missed one, I think, last year. But So the second Thursday every month, we meet here on Zoom. And then we have a YouTube channel and a Facebook page and also our own website, uh, austinadobeusergroup.com. And you can uh, watch all the presentations on the YouTube channel. Um, and get information on the upcoming ones and in the past ones on the um, on that Austin Adobe Users Group .com website. So today we're going to talk about uh, audio. So I'm just going to get right into it, and um, I'm going to share my screen here. And here we go. So I have. I'm going to do a couple of basic things first. Let me get rid of this thing. Um, uh, is this audition. What program uh, are you using? This is Premiere. Oh, it's Premiere. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm going to go into Audition, but you know, a lot of the Audition tools, how do I minimize this stupid thing? A lot of the um, tools from Audition are in Premiere now. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And a lot of the same things, they work the same way. It's in the, and in fact, uh, we're going to go into Audition in a little, uh, in a little bit. Um, audition for me, you know, because I work, I, I work mostly in video types of things, After Effects and Premiere all the time. And so those are really data heavy uh, files that you're using, you know, nothing's embedded, everything's linked, and it's got to process all that. And so because of that, I, I believe, um, you know, if you have a bunch of panels open, and you have a couple of effects on anything video wise, it might slow down the interface or might lag or get stuck or not be as stable as you might want it to be and you have to restart and reboot and all that, which no big deal. Um, and, and if you uh, have your system set up properly, um, that's be minimized. Now, but in audition, I never see that for as far as I'm concerned, it's the most stable of all the Adobe programs I love audition. It's just, I trust it. And really, I think that's because it's just processing audio. Not that that's not a technical complication as well, but it's not as data heavy as video. Right. So um, I was just going to do a couple of basic things with uh, Premiere here. You know, this all the, the, this is a project with nothing. So I recommend building a template project. So when you start any project in Premiere, this is a little side note, not really audio that you start with something already set up, maybe a bunch of bins for your assets. And, you know, maybe like, for example, one is of my bin like a folder. Yeah. A, a bin is exactly a folder. They just okay. call them bins and clips are the little, you know, video clips, the files. <laughs> right. And then bins are what they go in. Mm -hmm. So that terminology is the same, whether you're in Final Cut or Premiere or any editor at all. The, yeah, it's uh, legacy I mean, from the, the celluloid era, I think. Right. Well, it's all from film. You know, you had a clip yeah, from a film. I mean, celluloid. Well, you had a clip from a film strip and you put it yeah. in a metal bin that was labeled close-ups or whatever. Yeah. So all that, all that, uh, all the terminology is from yeah. that, the film thing. Um, so... I never start with a blank project because then I would have to build all this stuff. I build everything from a template project. I set up template projects uh, that are generic and I also have them for my certain clients. So that when I open it, I have in my project panel, I might have bins, the folders with the assets and the audio and the colors and the logos and all those things. So I'm not starting from scratch every time. I'm so adamant about this. I actually, um, there's a page I have set up it's from Adobe. Best practices, create your own project templates. I won't, I don't work without doing this. And this is a little side bit beyond, beyond the audio. So this is just a page and I can even copy this and put it in our chat so we have it. That's a good idea. Um, you, you, it's just so nice to uh, start with, you know, I don't have to redo the same work. That link to that page is uh, in the chat. Um, I just don't want to start blank every time. Why do I redo the same thing every day? You know, oh, now I need, where am I going to put my footage? Where am I going to put my audio? You know, and I just start with it already uh, set up. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm just going to open up a recent project where I, I, I set up this uh, audio presentation project earlier that I just reopened right now. So now here's my project, right? And so this was, uh, 
<laughs> this is a project for Salesforce I edited this morning. Right, I just wanted to show and talk about some audio things in Premiere, and then we'll get into doing some uh, actual work. So I'll just play it here. Or let me make sure. Can you hear this uh, audio when I play it? Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee. Can you hear that okay? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, good. So, question, can I stop you for a moment? If sure. I don't normally work in Premiere and I don't have anything to start with, am I better off just going to the audio audio program um or just, should i do this or where can i get the things to start with uh well uh i think that depends on your end result you know what are you making and what's the best tool to make that thing you want to uh -huh. make you know are you making a video mm -hmm. is it an interview are you making a logo or are you is it just going to be audio when you're done I was I, I I don't actually have a real uh, project to answer that with, but I was imagining that I might have an audio file <clears throat> that I would want to edit or put some music on or something like that. Yeah, um, well, you could do it in uh, you could do it audio wise. You can do it in either Audition or Premiere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so I think the, I think the best thing to do if you haven't really been in either one of those is to. Uh, you know, and Adobe has all those tutorials and everything. When you first load up the programs, you can go and look and feel and walk around and see which one makes sense. But if you go, mm -hmm. well, later I might want to do video because I'm going to maybe I'll just work in Premiere. So I'll kind of learn Premiere as I'm messing with this audio. Right. That makes sense. So <laughs> these are I don't, I don't want to go over Premiere a whole lot. I'm just going to really concentrate on audio. But so. Mm -hmm. This line right here that I just saw me move is the separator between the video tracks, which are these tracks up here, um, which you can make taller or smaller, and then the audio tracks down here, which I have built at a certain size. So I'm just going to talk about what these are, and then we'll just walk through it a little bit and see. So this track right here, this is a nested sequence. It's the cameras of Jen. It says right there, it's her camera. So that audio right here, which I'm going to solo, is just her voice. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, lead admin of Vandalus, and I'm going to show you. So me, immediately, when I play any audio, I also come over here and look at the meters because it matters. I'm going to talk for a couple of minutes on uh, real world parameters, and these are VU meters. So, for example, if you make a commercial that's going to go to a TV station or a network, the highest your peaks can be are minus 12 dB right here, minus 12. That's where it has to peak. If it doesn't, they'll reject it and send it back to you. you right? how to build See solutions. here, I'm already peaking way up here. To you how to integrate. So, you know, 90% of the stuff I work on these days is all kind of internet. It's going to go on a website or a YouTube channel. So really what I try and do is be consistent in my audio levels. So that, uh, for example, one of my clients or like this one, Salesforce, I try to make all my Salesforce videos so their audio levels are consistent. Mm -hmm. So when they play back, there's not, you don't have to adjust their audio. They're all the same on their YouTube channel. It just makes sense to me. And so I have mine. They Mine all peak around minus three. I try to stay away from minus zero where it may get clipped. I have a little thing here set up already. Um, so... This is a, this, I would call this minus three to minus 12. But if I look at this, if I set my, if I don't even listen to it and I just set my levels to these dialogue at minus six, well, we'll say minus three to minus six and sound effects minus 12 to 18 and music at minus 18. If I just do that by the numbers, the mix is going to be pretty good. It's a great place to start with. So that's just something to think about when you're going. I'm going to talk more about mixing and things here. So, uh, this is so, her, and I can tell this audio track is a stereo track because there's two waveforms. One is left and right. Now you can, the the way you look at anything, you know, this works in the same on all the Adobe programs. I can say, hey, I don't want to look at the rectified audio, so I'm going to turn that off. And so now it's each channel has like a center stripe that's zero, and the waveform is 
building off of the zero from the center. Or I actually do prefer it. Uh, I'm just used to it, I guess, rectified. So it's coming from the bottom. And it sort of helps you see these. Now, these waveforms are just representative of the audio levels. And they don't change when you've adjusted the volume like I have here. Thank so I'm just going to play this for you to listen to it. I'm going to turn off this solo. What this does is this would make it so you only hear that one channel. John, uh, so are you able to make the the, the, the panel, panel on which you're working larger so that we can just see uh, the details in it more? Well, I did, you know, I just zoomed way in, but I don't think that shows up on Zoom, does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> you might have to lower your resolution like I did the last time to uh, to make the screen better, bigger. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, we're just gonna I just was wondering if you could close the panels on the top row if you aren't using them. Maybe you are using them. Well, I mean, I mean, I can easily make this full screen. Yeah, that, that helps. Does That's that help? Better. Okay. Yeah, quite a bit. Thank um, you. Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, so uh, what I often do is, oh, now I got lost here for a second. So I have this, this is the voice track, basically the dialogue. I'm going to solo it again here so we can hear it. Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, lead admin of Angeles. And I'm... Right. And then this track here is the music where you can see I put in keyframes. These white lines here in the middle are actually representative of the volume. I'm going to have to close this down in a second to show what I need to show, but that's the music. And then you hear the volume level drop down there. And that's so it doesn't fight with you. How to build her voice. Hey, Jennifer Lee, lead admin of Andalus. If I'm the right, and the way that's done is well, let's go ahead and do that. So, and that really, if I select this track, and I look at the effects controls panel up here. Here's where the work really is. Here's where the keyframes really are. So this keyframe to that keyframe are these two keyframes right here. And I can see that it's going from 7 dB to minus 11. Now, I didn't really do it based on numbers. Maybe I started that way, but I'm doing it based on how it sounds. Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, lead admin. And then that sound effects are what you're hearing that when those things slide on and off are these audio tracks here, which they're really low. So the waveforms are kind of a little small. Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, lead admin of Andalus. If I'm going to show you how to build. Right. So um, one thing that's cool in Premiere is that there's an audio track mixer. You know, all all of the Adobe programs are really just panels. All these are just panels that you can move anywhere, just like in any of the other, um, you know, Adobe programs. When I can grab them by the title, I could move that panel down here and I can move the effects controls over here and I can screw the whole thing up. I'm going to go back to my, um, my preset here. Uh, reset the save layout. So there is a, there, are, there is a audio um, workspace, which again is just a different layout of the panels for working with audio where it puts up this essential sound panel, but it also rearranges where all these things are and all that. So I personally don't use the audio workspace. I just use my own workspaces, right? And then I um, modify them so that they, that I get the panels I want, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? It does. I'm just going to go back to edit. So. Um, the audio stuff in here is great. I'm going to show you. So first, let's mess with some keyframes. So I could, if I went up here to the effects controls and I adjusted the volume level by moving this number, see I'm moving the number, and you know what it does is then it puts a keyframe in here and I can see. So now that audio is going to come up right there. Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, lead admin of Andalus. If I'm going to show... So you kind of go up and down. I'm going to select that and just delete it, that keyframe. But another way to put keyframes in here when you're doing this stuff is if I come over here and hover over this white line, and if I command on a Mac or control on a PC, hold that down until I get the little plus sign next to my cursor and click it, then that puts a new keyframe there. 
And I can adjust the volume of that keyframe just by dragging it. And also where is it in time and where is it in amplitude by moving it up or down or left or right. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I let go, it's going to show up up here because it really lives in the effects controls. It's this one right here. But this is just so much more intuitive. So once I do this and get used to doing it down here, I don't even worry about these up here too much. Okay. So Vandalax. If I'm one thing I want to show is um, these audio channels, there's a track mixer. There's a clip mixer and a track mixer. I don't really use the clip mixer because if I'm going to do anything into the clip, I just do it down here in the actual clip itself. Or I'm just going to go to window here and go to audio track mixer. And let's just move this over here so we can see it bigger. This audio track mixer, these are the tracks. It's just like, it's like an audio board, right? And if I hit play, you can see can the I levels. I show you how to build solutions. And you have these little sliders I where I could drop her voice. Connect and it. unify all of your data. And to keep right, and I can hear that while I'm doing it. So it's kind of a cool thing. I, was I can also up here, this is an effects rack. So what I do, this is a trick. I do this always. Whenever there is music and a voice together, mm. because cl the clients always go, oh, the music's too loud. Turn the music down. Turn the music. Well, then sometimes for me, creatively, you've done it so much, I can barely hear it. I don't like that. I want to still hear the music. But what I do is I'll take and put a parametric equalizer, right, which is an effect we can get to by just clicking on these little drop downs put this parametric equalizer on here. And then what I do is I drop the level of the music between 1500 and 2500 in that frequency range, because that's where voices are. So the music now, and you don't, you're barely gonna even hear it. Let's solo this and listen to it. And now if I turn this on and off, you can kind of hear the difference. But what that does, though, is now that music just doesn't fight with the voice so much. I do this like every project. Um, I always drop the frequency down with the parametric equalizer on the on the music. so that I will show you how to integrate with data. So it doesn't fight with the voice so much, but we're still hearing it full in the other frequencies. So it's kind of a cool thing to do. Right? Okay. So that's the basics. We're gonna come back and mess around some more in here, but I wanted to also show some things here. So these, these are, and then we'll go into audition. So his audio seems kind of low. I can just tell by looking at it yes. and I play it. Not only does he have the talent, it's, he has a determination so to do what he wants here, to do. I really, I want it to be out about minus terrible. three. So I could raise the volume, right? But I'm gonna start with gain. So this is important to know. Audio, really, it's just as technical as video in terms of what it is and the controls for it and all that. So there's gain, there's volume, there's loudness, and all those things affect how you hear audio. But they're not the same thing. They're all different things. And you can go, there's rabbit holes in Wikipedia, you can go down and read all about the technical aspects of audio quality and sound and what it means and, and all that. Um, you know, I just usually push buttons to tell it sounds good and then stop. Um, that's my joke, but it's also partly true. Um, so when I look at his audio, I can just tell I wish he was stronger in all that. So I'm going to adjust his gain to start with his audio gain. And so in Premiere Pro, this is the one thing I don't like about Premiere Pro. In the, every other every other control, like I want to adjust the volume, it's right here, right? And I can I can raise the volume up and see what the numbers are and all that, right? And I can adjust it. I can make keyframes. I can change it and all that. Now with gain, I cannot. But gains for me is sort of the basic audio level. So I'm going to do this right here in this one. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say audio gain. And I'm going to say normalize all peaks to zero or minus three sometimes. And then you're going to see this here. Watch these waveforms. You'll see them sort of jump. Okay, now and now when I play, it's a little stronger. Do what he wants to do. 
up there more. So this seems more normal. We can then fine tune it with the volume level if we want to. So Don, what's the difference between, I guess, volume, a level and gain? Because I'm thinking I use them all kind of interchangeably. Yeah. What, well, um, what's the second term? What's the second term gain? Gain. Volume. Level or gain. Yeah. And there's also uh, loudness. Um, so this right here level it it's your volume level so this is your volume okay so so volume and level is the same yeah well right here it says volume mm, right and then it, it, you can either bypass the volume or adjust the volume level right there, with that there and then so when you also, say gain what are you what are, what actually are you referring to when you say gain i understand volume you can turn it down turn it up that's a, that's the a easy one but yeah. gain what what is gain at, and how does it relate to volume yeah yeah, I don't know. So are they the same? No, they're not the same. The reason I'm saying I don't know is because, dude, you can go on Wikipedia and you can say audio technical specifications for audio gain, and it's like 10 pages. Do you know? It doesn't, there's no like simple, you can, and you can read all 10 pages and go, I think I get it. So, I don't I don't have good analogies for that to set it up. You know, it's like for me, it's kind of like, do you really measure how much olive oil you put in a pan when you're putting it in? You're going to stir fry something or you just pour some olive oil in there. Mm -hmm. Right. And so gain sort of like that. I, I do gain first because actually when I if I adjust at least this way it works in Premiere uh, Resolve is different. If I adjust this. Uh, volume level and turn it way up right uh, i see it move that line up and it's louder now and he's clipped off it's clipping him i'm going to reboot it but it, it didn't change these waveforms oh, okay that makes that makes sense but when i adjust when i change the gain by right clicking and saying uh audio gain and uh you know i'm just going to make something up here i'll say minus 12 and that there i can see the waveforms change so if, if I use that as sort of my analogy thing, it's like um, uh, gains like the uh, the the underlying underlying product level, I guess. And then I can adjust it more with volume after that. It looks to me like the graph is changing in height. Is it a percentage? Is it like fifty percent? Is is it a scalable thing? Or is it more fixed, like pixel, like, you know? Yeah, no, uh, yeah. these are fixed, like a measurement of the audio. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, like a video scope would be. Um, okay, but so the, the really main man, I don't even really know who this guy is. He died in January. That's uh, Ken Block. He's a famous rally car driver and a co-founder of DC Shoes. And this is from a movie called Waiting for Lightning great movie but it's all about skating and all that i don't i'm not a skater i don't even really if it was i didn't if i didn't have this footage i wouldn't know who this guy is but um that's a little sorry is, there, is it ice skating what kind of skating <laughs> no like skateboarding and rally oh, car oh, being oh, okay yeah. gotcha gotcha um, um yeah waiting for lightning is a skateboard movie um anyway uh Okay, so, but really the reason I'm looking at him, if I play him, listen closely. Determination means a lot to me because not only does he have the talent, but he has a determination. So you can, do you hear that? No, can you hear the noise in the Zoom? I, I didn't think about this when I decided to do the audio, but can you hear the little, is that like, shh, you know, why he's talking? Do what he wants to do. And even to. Can you hear it? Not just. Yeah, right. it's all, it's all Okay, well, we're gonna because... we're gonna add a uh, reduced noise effect on here and turn it on and off and see if we can do it. So, and the way to do that is we want to get there's a panel called the Essential Sound. So I'm gonna go to you know these panels. If you go to Window, all the panels that you can get are here, and there's one called the Essential Sound in Premiere, and that comes up. And the first thing it asks me to do is, can I? I need to well, I need to identify what kind of audio I have selected. So I have this clip selected, and I'm going to say that's dialogue, just so my essential sound panel knows. And then I'm going to close a couple of these up. And then there's four things that I can adjust on a dialogue audio track with the essential sound panel. I can adjust loudness. 
which you can't really do anything other than auto match and that try that that'll try to even out some of these ups and downs so that maybe when he's softer in some spots and louder in other spots it'll sort of um uh what's the word i'm looking for you know well it'll, at least it'll even those out somewhat loud as well but we're not going to mess with that right now what we're going to mess with is repair and this is great there's a button called reduce noise and it, it's live too so i'm going to play it i'll turn it on uh, well, determination means a lot to me because not only does he have the talent he has a determination to do what he wants to do and even to terrible injuries he's been able to continue to improve and push and so do it. could you hear the change there when I was turning it on and off. So that's why determination means a lot to me because not only does he have the talent, but he has the determination to do what he wants to do and even to. Can you hear that through Zoom? Is that working? Can you yeah, hear the. It's subtle. Oh, okay. Because it's like, to me, it's like magic. This was awesome when it came into premiere. And so every time I teach it, if no one's excited, I'm like, no, you have to be excited about this because I'm just pushing a button. And the noise is gone. Right. And so I want to show you what's really happening now. So that's just a button you push, reduce noise. And what Premiere does, and this is the same thing that Audition does. We'll see when we go in there. It adds these two audio effects under here. One's called the noise and one's called hard limiter. And it puts those on there with these, or if I say edit, with these settings. It's default settings. And this one as well has some default settings right here, right? And so that's what's happening when I push this, but I can really just push reduce noise and how much noise do I want to reduce or add. I can move this slider and see, and all that can happen while it's alive. Not only does he have the talent, but he so has can... the determination to do what he wants to do and even to terrible injuries. He's been able to continue to improve and push. And... Yeah, now that was I should have considered that this might not show up that well in the audio uh, in Zoom, but we're, we're going to do some more. So that's going to jump in. So to me, that's magic. <clears throat> and that's just one thing that happens. So, and then I have this other, this is audio only clip. Let's listen to it for a second. Let you take command of your audio in film, video, and Adobe Flash software projects. Use on clip controls to make fast edits in intuitive, task-based tool okay so there's a phone okay. ring right there make fast edits in intuitive task-based and the client says hey we need to get rid of that phone noise what can you do about that can you fix that that it's in intuitive i don't know maybe we'll try i can make it better i bet so we're going to do that we're going to edit this clip in audition and you can do that straight from where this clip lives in the uh, project panel, or we can do it straight from our timeline simply by right clicking on it and saying edit clip in Adobe Audition, which we'll do. Now this is this, hold on one second. This clip is this clip right here. And what happened was as soon as I said edit in Adobe Audition, it made a new clip that's in Adobe Audition right now, that's really replacing this, right? So let's just go look at Audition. So now that clip, that audio clip is now in Adobe Audition. This is Adobe Audition. And I'm not gonna go through it all. This is really the default view. Actually, I don't think it comes with the show spectral frequency display. I think it shows up like this, unless you have it already set up. Just really get a zoom in on your uh, waveforms good. You know, here's really, you can see this noise. If there was no noise, you, this would be a straight line right there. Software projects. Oh, no, I guess not. Okay. Anyway, if we uh, deselect, we go find that ring. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's also go look at our spectral, spectral frequency display. You can see right there, I'll zoom in, is the ring. Fast edits in intuitive. You hear that right there? See it right there? Mm -hmm. So there's a healing brush. In Adobe Edition, a healing brush looks like a Band-Aid. And I'm just going to come over here with this brush. Yeah, and it's just like the healing brush that are, is in Photoshop. 
that it, yeah. it fixes things. What an interesting concept. I'm just going to paint over this ring. Mm -hmm. And it's like gone. Now, the problem is also the frequency of his voice there is going to change a little bit because we <laughs> moved everything. But Make fast edits in intuitive task-based tools. But again, to me, that's magic. Fast edits in intuitive task-based tools to clean. And for some reason, this clip of this always happens. The second one, it doesn't erase as well. So I'll do things like you can also, if you select an area, like let's get off of this. If I select an area, I can also hit delete and it'll, whoops. I can also hit, it should, I thought it, they changed it. Oh, well, let's go back. And healing brush. Sometimes um, I'll make the healing brush larger or smaller, and that'll affect how it's getting rid of things. Um, that one always takes a few more. Polish voiceovers, customize music. Intuitive. And then really all I have to do in audition is hit Commander Control S. Right. And then it's actually in. I'm not even going to do anything other than go back to Premiere. And now it's gone because it replaced the clip with what we just did. So this will be gone now. Use on clip controls to make fast edits in intuitive task based tools. And you can kind of hear his voice and intuitive because that's where, you know, that's where we did our work. And it kind of, I'm not, you're probably not even hearing it. It's so subtle. You're probably not even hearing it on Zoom. But there are some middle frequencies now in his voice that are gone. So he does have a little shift there. But it's better than the ring, at least in my opinion. That it's an intuitive task-based tools to <laughs> So that's awesome, if you ask me. Um, so that's a problem. I uh, I feel like a lot of my edit work, always there's too much time spent fixing audio because they didn't record it right. Maybe it's only on one channel. Maybe there's just full of noise. Uh, also, there's something that Premiere does. I was going to try it here. Uh, are you an ad um if i make a bunch of cuts in here sometimes on audio cuts on voices there'll be a little uh like um i'm just gonna make some in here and see oh uh, let's just do this here and this like this sometimes there'll be a little like click let's just zoom into this so we can see what we're doing Here's my audio edit. So we're just going to see data and to keep expedition trips. Are you an admin who manages? No. We're going to use data cloud to connect other departments. Okay. And we're going to use data cloud to connect other departments. I don't know. You might not hear it in there. I can hear it. There's a little click in there, a little click. So sometimes what I'll do then is I'll put a like uh, two frame dissolve there to get rid of that little click and other and that's common every editor i know does that um just because you have to and to me that's a um you know i love premiere pro but as you as you learn anything well you know where all the little uh issues or problems are and that's just you know one of them um so that's cool is there any do you, do you guys have any questions on any of that so far did i go too fast no you're fine okay good all right all right so i said i was going to come back to this one let's see Yeah, so the, this uh, client, they always, it's, everything has a sound effect. 
So like when the name comes hmm. on. I'm Jennifer Lee, lead admin of Andalus. And I'm going to show you how to build solutions. I will show you how to integrate with data cloud. So every graphic going off has a sound effect. Every graphic coming on has a sound effect. And again, those are just really, if I come in here and look, there's just um, different sound effects in here. And what I'll do is then I can take whatever, uh, here's a whole bunch. And maybe I just want, uh, I'll go find what I want to use. We're going to say this one. So there, I just isolated that sound effect. And now I can drag it straight down to my timeline. And I'm going to have it hit right here, which. And unify all of your data. Let's fix this here. Yeah, reset the save layout. Okay. So this is just a, all of your data and to keep your org data. This is to show you that. And then another keyboard shortcut that I love with the volumes and, you know, I can adjust it with channel volume here. Like we do. I don't know why it defaults to the keyframing on, but it does, but I can adjust the volume over there or I can grab this white line. You know, I don't want that to be a little lower now. Yeah. Not fighting with her so much. Or my favorite keyboard shortcut is if the audio clip selected, the bracket keys, which are right up above the return key or enter key. So the open bracket lowers the audio level. I can see it. I'm just hitting it 1 dB every time I hit it. Or the close bracket, the volume goes up and down. So it's a great little shortcut as opposed to grabbing this line and dragging it. Um, there we go. So now one note of operations or editing, let's say. So most videos that I do, even when they're commercials, sometimes, you know, you'll, we'll lay it out. So it's all audio first and maybe just the main person on camera. If there's an on-camera person, but all the audio, the music, how long this thing is 30 seconds. Okay. Here's our perfect cut. Here's, you know, all, you know, I'll get all the audio worked and laid out and set up and then I'll edit video or graphics or whatever it is on top of that, you know, audio that's laid out, but it's generally half the time, unlike, unlike movies, which are post scored often, um, I'll set up all the audio first. I'll get the music track we're going to use or something similar, at least a similar beat, and then edit all the audio with the voice and the music, and then put images over the top of that, be that, you know, maybe I'll start with a camera, but then we're going to cover that all up with B-roll or graphics or uh, whatever it is. Um, so that's just a good uh, process or methodology about um, the way you start your video. So it's just, if you don't, for me, it's important for these days, you know, they want, you know, there's 200 names and credits to a movie, but a lot of the companies or corporations, or if you work for them, they want you to do everything where the, at a higher level, you know, everybody's an expert, you know, on movies, the person that records the sound effects and the person that edits the sound effects and the person that mixes the sound effects. That's three different people because everything's a specialty. And so if you're going to be some sort of video editor type person or making media with audio and all that, then you're likely going to have to get halfway decent at a number of things, editing, color correction, audio repairs and mixing. Uh, unless is that, you're is that a union thing that you have to be a specialist? Uh uh, no, in fact, it was just, uh, you know, I'm a visual effects artist and compositor. So it was just last week. Visual effects is now a union thing in IATSE. Right. Um, so now that's, I was my whole career, I haven't been union except once I worked at a cable network that has some union, but um yeah, no, and then, you know, and Texas is a right to work state. So you, there's no, I've never been on a union shoot or anything in, uh, or a project in Texas, but in New York, like every one of them. But my role was never union. So 
but like this last shoot I was on in New York, um, uh, you know, and I just stand around and look at it and they ask me a question every two hours. Do we need to paint green all the way? You're like, no, just to there. And they're like, okay, thanks. And then you're, you know, go to craft service and eat for a couple hours. But the, uh, I asked the guy, Hey, I'll help you move these chairs. Some guy was moving 300 chairs over. I was like, Hey, I'll help you move these chairs. Like, yeah, I wish you could. We couldn't because of the union thing. You know, all the drivers, the drivers that pick up the director and stuff, they're all Teamsters. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I think that's probably a good thing um, for us because, you know, in the in the film world, you know, everybody's freelance. You know, until you get your next gig, you're just, you don't really... Uh, the studio jobs are small compared to the amount of uh, freelancers. So, and, that, and that's what I tell too when I teach those classes that, you know, the in the film industry, word of mouth is everything. You know, that's all that matters. Hey, we need someone to do this. Oh, get Bob. I worked with him or her on this last thing, and she was awesome. You know. And then that's how you get your next gig because you did a great job in the last one and someone tells someone else and then then you're on, then they know who you are and that's just how the whole thing works. Um, okay. So really I wanted to show those tools of repair and a little basics of mixing um, right here. Here's one other thing that Premiere does. So uh, this is a, uh, this is this a bug. So, you know, this sequence here is it's a nested sequence, right? Which means it's a sequence, an edit sequence inside of a sequence or the same way like a group would be in Photoshop, right? So I'm gonna go into this sequence and um, I accidentally deleted the uh, video, but so there's the audio This that's this, you know, this asset is now this audio right here, but look, there's no waveforms. Where's my waveforms? So I do this 20 times a day. I even have it mapped to a keyboard shortcut. If I go up to sequence and I say render audio, I don't have it mapped in my Mac. Um, render audio, and then I'm gonna have to wait here for a second and it's gonna make like preview or cache files of this audio, audio previews just so I can see the waveforms. There's the waveforms now. Oh my. So to me, that's a bug. I have to do it every day. Anytime I'm using a nested or a sequence within a sequence. Mm. I like to complain. You know, <clears throat> I, I, are, are nested sequences generally a good thing to use? Good um, practice? I would uh, think so. Uh, well, I'll do it a lot, especially like um, there's also a multicam thing, which I used to make the nested sequences. So let's say there's mm -hmm. a there's an action and you have three cameras on it or it's a concert mm -hmm. or a, you know music thing and there's three cameras on it. You can sync all those cameras so they're all lined up at the same exact time and then put them in what's called the multicam sequence. So it's really just a nested sequence. Mm -hmm. So you just have one bar, one video bar in here, but it's all three cameras. And you can while and then as you watch them, you can select which one looks best for the sound. Yeah, you can even play it. Very nice. Um, well, not the sound, but I'm gonna get this. You can play it and then literally hit numbers one, two, or three, or four on mm -hmm. your keyboard, and it'll switch between the different cameras while you're playing, and it records and remembers those edits. And then if you don't like one, you can go back and change it. You know, oh, that's great, but this one needs to be longer or whatever it is. Yeah, it's yeah, that's amazing. Uh, but I think also nested sequences tax the application a little bit. So sometimes there's little errors like that whole can't see the waveforms. But you know, there's that's the thing. I mean, I know Adobe tools so well, I complain about them, you know, every day, but they're they're awesome. And, you know. Tell me the tool that you use that didn't have any problems, right? It doesn't exist, so they all have they all have their own issues. Um, so and you get you know you just get you someone work around it. It's all fine. Um, yeah, Premiere's. It's to me, it's just impressive how strong it is. 
So there's another editor called Resolve, which I started using and I use it. But still, there's certain things that I just go to Premiere for and the audio is one of them. And so is anything to do with captions or text or that kind of thing in Premiere is just great. And you can now, because of AI, you can you can transcribe your clip, like I could transcribe her talking, right? And then I would just have a transcription of all her text. And then I can make edits down in my edit timeline by just editing the text, like selecting this sentence and hitting delete. And then I'll make an edit in my timeline, right? And it'll take out the text that I just edited, but it'll just do like all that um, by itself, right? Just by me selecting and editing text. It's kind of a cool or a good way to get, you know, the rough cut or your first kind of sort of edit before you massage it and everything. So these audio tools in here are strong. And, uh, you know, I have a friend who's an editor at uh, a big company, McKesson, and he, uh, he, he'll do an edit like I just did right here. And then what he does is he uh, takes this whole sequence into audition and fine tunes all his audio in there because it's a little more fine tuny and the tools work great in there and all that. I just don't, cause I don't, because they're so impressive in here, I don't really need any more tools personally. Um, but he is, he does, does a audition workflow. Um, and that works for him. And also that minimizes the whole little clicky thing on these voice edits. But yeah, the audio tools in here are just strong. And then of course, but you need them because there's always something or, you know, everything's remote recorded now, or, you know, I'll do things for Salesforce where, you know, everybody there that is their recording is in a different location. The ones in San Francisco, one's in London, one's in Montana, and none of them have the same mic or anything like that. So that's part of my job is a sort of, uh, um, you know, conform the audio so that it all sounds the same and has the same sort of levels and sort of matches a little bit and, and all that, which I do in every one. And the tools in here work great for that. So that's really about it i think do you have a plug-in that uh matches the beat of a music to the voice or to to a object oh yeah that's uh that's great so yeah no there's a um it's actually a plug-in from mama world called beat edits um let me see if i can find it real quick it's not free. I just got a new updated version. Let's see here. Um, I think it's beat edits. It's again, it's a plugin and it's not free, but it'll make markers. It'll, right. You can decide beat edit for Premiere Pro. Yeah. Beat edit for Premiere Pro. So this just, it'll make markers and things to help you. And then you can edit right to where the beats are. You can also tell it like, oh, you know, where to base the markers on. Is it uh, the melody or, you know, only do the heavy bass beats. That right. kind of, um, and then what it does, it puts markers in here. Mm -hmm. And then you can take clips and you can say edit to markers. And then, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's cool. I've only used it a couple of times actually, but. Now what I do is like I do. I got a little stump video. I just look for the peaks in the uh, in the video and just you know put the animation right there at the peak. Oh yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> I do a lot of that too. Or I'll, I oh let me show you one more thing. I forgot. Uh, I custom edit music all the time, but there's one other tool in here that's uh, awesome. So let me find some. Do I have music in here? Oh, let's see, uh, music. I'm sure I do. Music, yeah, I gotta have we. What am I thinking? I gotta show this. So here's one. Uh, I'm just gonna let's do it this way. <clears throat> so here's a piece of music. Again, this is Salesforce, I think. Yep, and I can see it's from zero to it pays off right here at two minutes. 
Okay, well, that's great. What if, though, I need us to be on a 30 second promo, let's say? Okay, well, I'm going to have to edit this. So maybe right here, I'll make a cut. Right. And then, like you were doing and this beat here. Okay, then I'll make a cut there. Then I'm just going to cover that up with that. Okay, so maybe mm -hmm. that works. Let us see here real quick. Okay, we can tell that's a couple of frames off. So I'll get there, you know, I can do oh, it like that. But there's a tool now in Premiere and it's under this group here. It's called Remix Tool, which used to only be in Audition. And that just recently in the last six months, I think uh, maybe longer because my sense of time is, you know, um, but there's a Remix Tool. So I'm going to select that Remix Tool. I'm going to say, look, I need this to really, it's in somewhere around 30. And I can just now really just drag this. Click and dragging this. And I'm say, I want it to be this long. And now it's processing and trying to figure it out. Now, due to melody and timings and all that, it may not get perfect to the exact spot where you want. But right. um, I can keep kind of massaging it. Well, that got me a little closer. And then these little squiggly lines are edits that it made. But so oh, now, wow. yeah, now that two minute track is 32 seconds even. That's cool. And if we wanted to, we could just cut off that first part right there. Let's just do that because right. we don't need that and delete that. And we'll just delete that because it does it twice. So now I bet it's only 30 seconds. Let's see. I need it to be right at 30. And almost, but let's pretend. Okay. So yeah, now it's 30. And. Which is a great which is a great tool to help edit music so you don't have to painstakingly go through and mm -hmm. do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the remix tool is your friend. Now, again, it doesn't work perfect or I can't, it's difficult to go, I need this to be exactly right here. Like, well, the the timing and the, the beats per minute and all that aren't gonna always work out to your yeah, favor. Yeah. But most people are not gonna recognize that. I mean, you get caught up in the paralysis of analysis. When you know, and uh, unless you listen for it, you're not gonna miss one little beat unless you're making a conscious effort, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, but that remix tool works great just for that. Okay, cool. Let's see this and this. There it is. Well, did that any of that make sense? Was that a decent thing to see? And now, you know, there's no way to really, you know, maybe that's one of the things with our meetings too. I, you know, I showed us show stuff, but until you get in there and do it yourself, you know, I've watched like two presentations on uh, from from Cornelius on, you know, the generative AI stuff in Photoshop, and you know, and I go, oh, this is awesome. But until I went in there and started doing it, you know, I didn't, I had to go and remember. Right. You know, nothing really sinks in until you're doing it yourself. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, I, can, exactly. I, I can watch somebody dig a hole, but I don't know what it feels like until I go dig a hole or whatever. <laughs> That's a good analogy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah then my, mine was grayed out for a minute my in photoshop my generative ai and then it said i googled it and it said that maybe my age was not correct in my adobe id and i was like what <laughs> so i just got the latest version and then it was fine mm. okay that's really all I have, unless you guys have any specific questions or wanted to. No. So what do we have for next month? 